Now behind me is arguably the most famous crop circle field in the world. So today's video I'm going to go through what I know about crop circles from growing up here when they first started. For those of you romantically invested in crop formations and aliens and messages from outer space and other phenomena, um, this comes with a warning that you may get cognitive dissonance on some of the things that I tell you or that you work out from what I tell you or just from any other way but I thought I'd throw the warning in there before I start because uh, yeah, I've had it before, I know what it's like. So proceed when you're ready. Lots have been said about crop circles, or more accurately, crop formations. Uh, they've fired up people's imaginations, they've fired up people's creativity, they've even caused people to move. There's uh, lots of ideas abound, misinformation, disinformation, guesswork, dowsing, all kinds of things. And people have dreams and ideas about aliens from other planets visiting in UFOs and things. So it's no, no, no great leap from there to some certain creation stories or creation myths of spacemen from outer space descending to Earth. You know, I've read and heard what various people have said about it and I do find it curious and interesting, um, mostly because I've lived it, you know? I've grown up in the area from the beginning until now. Now this is Eastfield, most people know it for being the cover of a Led Zeppelin compilation album. So I guess the best thing to do is to take you from the beginning. So if we go now to the site of where I saw the very first one, where my father took me back in 1980. This is the site of one of the first crop circles of the phenomena. Behind me, there's a tumulus, um, or commonly a round barrow mound, that's what they're commonly known as. And round here, that's another one. But back in 1980, my father brought me here to see in this field a crop circle one of well the very first crop circle i ever saw and one of the very first crop circles that ever appeared in this country for we are in crop circle country um, and in this although this isn't full of crop circles every year this does have one or two occasionally beyond there where you can see the vehicles uh, that's Avebury and Silbury Hill and Windmill Hill and that kind of area which has loads. Kind of in the midway time, about the late 90s, there was very often a crop circle would appear in this field as well as crop circle would often appear in that field there opposite Silbury. After the first ones they were all circles so I've been able to see the development of them. So after the circles came the circles with a ring and then maybe multiple rings and then the keys 
They were circles with a line, with another circle, or a circle and a ring, with a line, then another circle, a circle, you know, and combinations of such. Then what started to happen is two lines were put either side that looked like 11-11. Then they developed into fractals, uh, various geometric designs, and, and up until recently, various um, certain medical representation. And it's also very interesting how since after the 1111 things were on the crop circles that suddenly 1111 became a thing, almost like it was deliberate. Then what happened was a big debunking thing went down with newspapers full of these two old blokes called Doug and Dave who did it with planks. Planks and string. Which, yeah, you can do it like that. Now on top of that, I personally know people involved in designing and creating of them. What's also interesting about them is that they were recruited by ex-military officers. Now I, I know what I think, but I, you know. <laughs> but even then, these people, they aren't from around here, they aren't local, they may be living here now, but when it all started they weren't. Now planks and string method doesn't leave the same measurable things in the in the the plants that uh, that other methods do or other ways that they form or other suspected ways that they form um, and obviously the Doug and Dave disinformation misinformation campaign didn't really help that because it encouraged loads of people to go out and do it themselves hence the real and the fake. Now it's story time, starting with when I was around while a crop circle was being f formed in the field behind me, back in 2014. I sat here with a friend of mine, we were having a cup of tea and eating and just chatting. And we're looking over that way, and that way is looking towards Avebury. Um, I think this was, um, this might have been August bank holiday actually, but I know it was a weekend, it might have been the Sunday. And uh, so we were here and we saw this Chinook helicopter flying towards us. Uh, I didn't really think much of it because, you know, this is a military area. And uh, it flew around and then we noticed it was banking around going round in circles, backwards and forwards. It would first be over there and sound like it was hovering. Then it'd be over there. And this went on for probably about an hour. Anyway, we were a bit bemused by it because it wasn't normal behavior. It wasn't normal flying. Something was definitely going on. And then as we were sat here, my friend was looking that way and I was looking this way and I saw two birds fly they sort of came round and then they sort of came round and went like that and I saw their wings I also saw their wings shut and I saw them glint in the sun and then they disappeared from view and it took me a while because you just don't expect that, do you? You think, oh, two birds. Uh, but it, it wasn't two birds. That was just my mind making pictures. And I realized two birds can't, birds can't glint in the sun. And what I saw were actually silver metallic balls with a little flap that came out on either side, a bit like wings. And if you know about crop circles and things, you will know that very often there is, there are balls seen, two, three, four. 
which I'll come on to my reason why at some other point. And, and I thought, do you know what? I reckon if I go and search online, which I couldn't at the time because I wasn't online, I said I'll, I'll, I'll ask someone to search online to see if a crop circle formed tonight or this afternoon. I got in touch with someone and sure enough, that afternoon someone had reported a crop circle just just over the hill there. Now you make of that what you will. I know what I make of it. That one is in a separate video, but it seemed appropriate to put it in, in here because it's relevant, isn't it? Now, back in the late 90s, sometime 98-ish, we were over, I went with a group of us, and we went to West Kennet Long Barrow, and we visited a crop circle that was near there. And I've shown you a spot of footage from Silbury Hill and West Kennet Long Barrow. Anyway, so we went in, and obviously we were walking up the, tra uh, the, the tram lines, the sprayer lines, you know, being considerate. And as we were coming in, coming out on that side of us were these two little women. And I say little women because they were tiny, they were small. They were old, or they looked like they were in their, well, 70s, maybe 80s. They were quite old. They were still quite agile. But they were, they were what? Maybe not even five foot tall. But the interesting thing about them, I mean, they had a vibe of these people are strange. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, sorry, I'm, I'm guilty of judging. Well, you know, there was something strange about them. And as you got, they got closer, you could see that their eyes were black. There were white bits, but they had black and they seemed to be quite big. Now I've had, the, you know, that would be weird, wouldn't it? If someone said that to you, but, and I've had it happen since one of my neighbors and I was talking to them and I just thought, your eyes are black and their eyes were blue, you know, sort of grey blue. Anyway, my friend looked at me and he said, did you see those two? And I said, yeah. And we both sort of shook our heads with the weirdness. You know, best way I can describe it is the weirdness. But as for the crop circle, didn't really feel much in there at all, to be honest. So, I don't know about that one. I couldn't even tell you what the design was, because obviously we were on the ground. Now, one other thing that I probably should say is that in what I've seen about them, Pretty, and videos I've watched with sound, you can hear a Chinook helicopter in the background. And they're nearly always associated with orbs. At night time they're glowing, but when I saw them, they were just silver balls with a kind of thing that lifted up. Like a hatch, you know, like a DeLorean car. And there was two, there was one on either side, on the ones that I saw. Now my mother famously, well, locally famously, has been in the paper as having seen UFOs. Now, actually, there is a funny story because she told me she was in the paper and um, I said, oh right, she said, yeah, yeah. But other people saw it as well. Um, and she said, oh, you know, I was talking to someone and, you know, they said that they'd seen it as well. And the next thing I know, it was in the paper. <laughs> and it turns out the person she was talking to was a reporter for the paper. 
but um, you know, living on the edge of Salisbury Plain, you get to see UFOs, or in my case, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> but I was around when my parents did. Uh, my parents have seen them um, quite regularly, and uh, you know, they've always they've not been alone in seeing them. People in other places have, or other areas close by have seen them. So let's take you to the day when I was out with my daughter and a friend looking at orchids. And so we, it was a really hot day, midsummer, and we we got round to one side of the hill we were on and there was a crop circle. So we looked at that for a bit and then carried on looking at orchids. And as we walked back from where we where we come from, we heard we saw not far away from us, probably as near as that tree is, the one in the center, a skylark rose up and flew into the air and did that thing that skylarks do. Go, look at me, look at me, the nest is near. Look at me, look at me, the nest is near. Which is what they're doing. And, um, so I turned my camera into the sky and then looked towards it to try and find it. And then I zoomed in to 4.2 magnification. And here's the resulting footage. Did you see it? Well, in true coincidental lifestyle, I didn't notice this until the other day. It's about five years old, the footage. And I was, <laughs> I was actually looking through my footage to try and find a good ending clip for this video. And I thought it would be quite good to be looking up into the sky. And, uh, so I looked, looked through it to make sure it was okay. And then I saw that this. So I slowed it down and paused it and took a shot of what I could see and zoomed in and I saw this. And the next frame, I did the same and I saw this and noted the difference. So I then looked at other bits that I found in the same footage with, um, you know, with bits flying across because it was a, you're on a hill, the wind blows, um, grass seed is there and, and stuff. Anyway, and all the other bits, they look like bits. Apart from this one which is clearly made, and you can see the speed that it goes across. I mean, because I'm, you know, it's digital, so it's like taking a shot, then not taking a shot. It's not a continuous feed. Um, you can't, I'm not getting the, the trajectory, you know, the, you know, each, <laughs> as a, I'm not getting it as a continual thing. You know, that's how it is, isn't it? No idea, but it was, you know, close to a crop circle. So is that shooting myself in the foot? <laughs> I don't think so. Just because it's unidentified and we don't know what it is doesn't mean that there are organisations who don't either. Now, after finding the video with a UFO in, it led me to look at other footage I'd taken that day. And it was lunchtime, as I say. So I've, I've had a look, and I'm gonna play you a couple of bits of footage now. Here's the first one.
And here's the second one. And what I've done is I played them through as slowly as I could and I've stopped and I've zoomed in and I've taken screenshots of things flying about. This one was the side that I shot the original UFO and I think that's it flying around the top there. I've also calculated a speed based on distance between the shots and some of them are flying well over the 60 mile an hour drone speed and and as you know you know drones that the public can buy don't really fly that fast i also zoomed in on bits bits of grass or stuff blown in the wind and zoomed in on that and it you know there's i don't i don't look at it and go oh is that something it's quite obviously so irregular that it's not anything else but if I put a few on the screen now you can see just how just how suspect they are especially when they're moving in speed of over maybe over 100 miles an hour now I've done a bit of a search for the one for something that looked like the one that I found or that I've got and shown you here and what I can find are Israeli made military craft but the in one thirtieth of a second two of the posts at the corner disappear down in that speed which is very quick <laughs> well, yeah, I can't, you can't even imagine how quickly one thirtieth of a second is um, and the others, most of the others, I, in my feeling, my heart, my feeling, is that they're actually military drones or some kind of drones. Like I said, I didn't see anyone take a drone up. So who knows? I mean, there could have been someone up there flying drones and they could have been flying them that fast. Now, going back to what I said about people relocating, there is a woman who relocated from Canada to Devizes. Uh, there are various other people that have come from outside the area to investigate. Uh, and, you know, for years now they've been running excursion tours, helicopter tours, you know, to go and visit crop circles. So there is a there's a business around it, but it doesn't mean that they're not actually happening. Or, you know, do you know what I mean? There's, it's, it's inconclusive. The other thing that I want to tell you is that I grew up around here before they started and long after I was still here and I'm still around. And I know lots of people around here and obviously we all talk about it and not one of them doesn't think that the military are behind it. Now if we look at investigators who've come here, there's the sentence, investigators have come here, they haven't grown up here. I was hoping the bombs would be still going off because they're Salisbury Plain over there but as far as you can see into the distance that's the hills of Salisbury Plain all over there well it's not that far from there to here or to all around this is the centre here Wiltshire Stonehenge Avebury what better way than to go to a magical area with lots of ley lines and stuff and leave these symbols because people aren't going to want to attribute them to the military are they? Now another thing that's involved for me is well you can see the human design in them 
Now, if we got to go on to the balls, now my theory still fits. My theory about the balls, the orbs that form them, fits. Fits everything that's been found. Now, if you cast your mind to doing the magnets on the iron filings, if you have multiple magnets, you can create patterns. Well, what if these orbs are like some kind of laser or something? Laser magnetic? I don't know. Whatever it is, they can fly in the air without, without an engine because they're silent or, or the engine is very quiet, whatever propels them. But wouldn't that explain how the, the wheat can be heated up and bent in certain formations and if you've got four or five or six orbs all working, doing different things to create these complex things, now, I think it just illustrates that if you don't know the history of somewhere or some place and what's gone into it, there will be a whole lot of stuff that you miss because you can't possibly know it. And what I've also found with all the crop circle researchers, they don't speak to anyone like me who grew up around here and whose friends and family and stuff have regularly seen UFOs or saw UFOs. How far is the Salisbury Plain away? It's not very far away, is it? It's just all too coincidental for me. And interestingly, how last year there was one, oh, it's in the shape of the coronavirus. Yeah, of course it is been deliberately done so everyone goes oh it's a sign it's not a sign someone's doing it like us some human is doing that now I will concede that they could be using some reverse engineered technology or technology from other worlds that's not out of the realm of things but to keep but if you look at the progression of crop circles they've reached a point where like well, what more can you do? You can't go any further with it, aside from just keeping on doing these designs. Because if you look at the original circles and then the rings, and then they reached a point where they didn't seem to grow that much further. Almost like they were limited in design. And I kind of think that the only thing limited in design is man and his brain. Well, that's just some thoughts. And, and what I know. Now, the other side of it is there are people involved in an operation to keep it so that no one ever finds out the truth. So I've no doubt that somewhere on this video it will be put that I'm some kind of nutter or some drug-crazed drug loon who's obviously insane and deluded and whatever. <laughs> I'm, only I'm only repeating things that not only I think but probably thousands of people who live around here and grew up around here think as well. We don't have any doubts that it's the military. What is behind that, what drives that, I don't know. But for something that's supposedly so, you know, complex and stuff, it hasn't really developed. Not really. They're just sort of still part of a theme, aren't they? Though most of this video's filmed around Eastfield around Eastfield and, and where I first saw crop circles. Now Eastfield is, is curious because after a few years, I don't, I don't know how many, it was a number of years that it was happening every year in Eastfield, the farmer set up a little hut and charged people entry to the field because he was unhappy and he was trying to claim something back for the damage to the crops, you know? 
I mean, he must have got some money for the Led Zeppelin cover. I would have thought, but maybe he didn't. Um, and then it, it did keep happening every year, year, and he must have pissed him off because he had to then, instead of concentrating on what his farming, he had to concentrate on the crop circles and all the extra hassle that came with that. And then so he, I heard that he was sort of complaining a lot and then suddenly, and since then, none have been appearing in his field. Now, if you were from an, if you were some other intelligent life form and you were trying to communicate with us, would you be bothered where you were communicating a message? Don't know. I don't know. And why would you make them all cryptic? <laughs> anyway, my jury is still out. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm sure those people will leave comments. <laughs> but I can't promise to reply to them all. Thanks for watching. See you later. Ta-da. Thank you.